Hello friends, this video on heredity and evolution part 17 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So let us now see what evidences were obtained from fossils. So before that, let us first try to understand what are fossils. Fossils are preserved remains of living organisms from remote past. That means the organisms which lived several years ago, their remains which have been preserved under the soil. So they are known as fossils. So how do they help us? Now these fossils may vary from microscopic that means a, a fossil can be for a single bacterial cell to it can be a huge animals like dinosaurs. For dinosaurs also we have fossils of dinosaurs maybe it, it's part of its body or the entire dinosaur skeletal structure. So we have got fossils ranging from very small size to a very big size. So fossil mainly preserves only a portion of the dead organism, for example, the skeleton, the bone or the teeth, etc. So this is how they look like. This is the example. This is this picture shows the fossil of a dead fish. This is the fos fossil of a tea bar a tree bark. This is the fossil of the head of a dinosaur. So this is how it was. So now let us try to understand from where do we get these fossils. I mean, just by looking at the fossils, you would have seen that there are certain people who actually who are, whose job is generally to dig the surface of the earth. They, they generally belong to the archaeological department, right? So what do they do? Their job is to dig the surface of the If by chance they find something, something from ancient times somewhere, they start digging those places and maybe they'll get to see something deep under the earth, right? Now the question is, how are these fossil layers formed? I mean, how do these fossils actually help us? What information do they give us? In order to understand that, we need to understand the concept of the fossil layers. Now, these fossils are preserved under the soil layer by layer. And the formation of these fossil layers actually help us in understanding the evolution. So let us have a look how are these layers of fossils formed. Now basically what happened was that long time back, there were some organisms which were living on the earth. Right? So now when those organisms die, what happened? They are buried under the surface of the earth. And then those remains get covered with layers of sedimentary rocks. Now they get pressed by those rocks and an impression is created there at that layer of the soil. Now the next generation of organisms come. So here you can see this was the bottom layer. If you see, this is the bottom layer. Now these dinosaurs age came when the dinosaurs lived. So when they died, the another layer was formed above this layer, right? So this was layer two. Then came the next era where you see different animals lived. Now when these animals die, they get dug above the dinosaurs layer. So what do you see here? This way, deeper the fossil is found, that means the older the fossil is. So where exactly you are finding the remains of a dead organism will also tell you that what was the uh, duration of that organism. When was that organism actually existing or not. So that is the information which we get with the help of the fossil layers. So how do we estimate the age of fossils? How do we know how old the fossil is? So one simple way is by looking at the layer of the fossil. So deeper the layer where the fossil is found, older it is. And it was also seen after a lot of studies that the fossils which are found deeper and under the earth, they are simpler when compared to the fossils which are found on the upper layers. So which also proved that the organisms which came later, they are more complex when compared to the organisms which existed before. So this was one way looking at the fossil layers was one way to estimate the age of how old the fossil is. Another way was by detecting the ratios of isotopes of different elements. So I don't know if you are aware of the term isotopes, if you have heard of it in your chemistry, isotopes are those elements which have got the same atomic number but different mass numbers. For example, carbon 
has two isotopes c12 and c14 so both of them have the same atomic number six but their mass numbers are different so they are known as isotopes of each other so by finding out how much now every isotope or every radio isotope will have a specific half life so when we talk about radioactivity in our higher classes in physics if you want you can refer the videos of physics to understand more about radioactivity so every radioactive element will have a specific half life so if we know that half life of that specific isotope we will be able to calculate how old that isotope is so once we know the composition of the fossil that means once we know what are the isotopes that are present in the fossil and in what amount we can give and get a an rough estimate of how old the fossil is so these are the two ways by which the age of an fossil of a fossil can be estimated so now you can see that how the fossils are helping us first of all it gives it tells us what were the organisms that were existing on this earth they also tells us which organism existed before and which organism came after that organism it also tells us when did that organism exist right so that way is fossils were an advantage now how do fossils give evidences for evolution fossils at upper layers are more complex than that at lower layers as i mentioned before also so they can tell us that complex organisms uh, have arisen from simpler organisms fossil records show that there is a link between birds and reptiles so by looking at many fossils which were obtained from different places it was seen that there was a relationship between birds and reptiles long back there existed reptiles like this which had feathers which had wing like structures so they were feathered dinosaurs now there was a good amount of resemblance between the feathered dinosaurs and the modern birds which we see today so what was that missing link between the birds and reptiles they found something called archipteryx so that was basically a dinosaur but that had wings like a birds so it had resemblance with both birds and reptiles it its fossil records indicated as if the dinosaurs gradually the feathered dinosaurs gradually got converted into birds now how did they convert the same process of evolution right there will be certain changes which which will happen due to natural selection there will be certain changes which will happen due to genetic drift and that is how it will gradually change into a different organism altogether so this was a missing link this actually showed that birds originated from reptiles right so when you look at the feathered dinosaurs they had this feathers only for insulation against cold weather because when the weather was very cold the feathers will give them some warmth but if you see now for modern birds the feathers are used for flight right so the feathers have adapted themselves in due course of time for different functions so fossil records help us helped us to actually find out this missing link between the birds and the reptiles fossil records show how evolution occurred in some mammals with time so by looking at different types of fossil records which we find we see that there are many similarities many between many different animals like horses elephants camels so they everything is related somewhere or the other and that information is given by the fossil records thank you Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.